a candidate standing in Scotland for the European elections oh, yeah. for a party called No to EU and Yes to Workers' Rights. My name is uh, Murdo McLean. I'm from uh, the Highlands of Scotland. I'm standing uh, in a coalition uh, party of uh, socialists on under the name of No to EU and Yes to Workers' Rights. I left mainstream school with no qualifications, no levels, no anything like that. I uh, started as an apprentice baker. I have two trades now in a profession. Uh, I've, I'm a baker and I'm also a chef. I'm also a social worker. I went on the journey of uh, to get to where I am just now, uh, leaving school at the age of 16. And in my 40s, I thought I needed to do something else and use my, my brain. So I went back to college and then on to university. Uh, no to EU, Yes to Workers' Rights is an electoral coalition that supports workers' rights, decent public services and peace. The European Union is a threat to all these things and I want to stand up and fight against all the oppression that I feel is coming out of the European I'm, Union. I'm against the EU anyway. Uh, that's no way. So I think I'm, but you know why I'm against the, the EU? Why? Right? For, the, for the simple reason, we need to shut up. Me personally, and there's a lot, well, a lot of Scots like that, I want to come out of the EU because I want to shut the borders because we're only a small island. Right, we need we need jobs for British people and the people, not just British, the people that are here now, that's we're full up, we're only an island. I voted because I because I want my country back to for for the British people and the people that are here. Uh, well we have a goal of leaving the uh, European Union. I completely disagree with them. They scare me a little bit. Um, they, I just, I don't understand the mentality of it. I think multiculturalism is a great thing. I love the ease we, we can move through Europe, you know, we can integrate. I, I think it's fantastic, but obviously there's room for difference in opinion and that's what they do. They worry me. It worries me how much support they've been getting recently. Um, their policies don't seem to make much sense and um, so many people have been persuaded into voting for them. Um, it's just it's a bit concerning really that they're gaining momentum and support all the time. Yeah. Um, I think that in the large part it's to do with dissatisfaction with national politics in the United Kingdom and then dissatisfaction with politicians from the major parties is transferred onto, uh, onto other issues such as immigration and Europe because Europe is a source of immigration etc etc and you have this this mentality which takes root where people want to they think the solution to their problems is to close themselves off and we've seen that you see that a lot throughout European history I wouldn't say it's just a UK problem I think it just seems particularly prevalent here because there is such widespread dissatisfaction and also because our media does tend to focus a lot on these Eurosceptic parties so you have it kind of almost inflates the issue to the point where it's all you can talk about when you talk about Europe and the European Parliament has actually got quite a lot of powers especially since the entry into force of the, of the latest version of the, of the EU treaty the Lisbon Treaty um, for example, uh, this time uh, the European Parliament will elect the President of the European Commission uh, and also be, be very, very much involved in the election of the whole Commission uh, as well as other very high-ranking positions in the European Union. Um, and this is something that, that actually gives the European Parliament a real say in the way that the EU will be working for the next five years. Troika is one. Is the Troika one of them? Uh, I can't remember them offhand. My, um, <laughs> no. Troika. The the bank. European Council of Ministers. Yeah. The 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 bank. The Troika is the banking one. It's in Brussels, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think um, they would obviously uh, discuss laws. The 
the heads, there's three, there's, I think there's three parts to it. The heads of uh, states, which I think there's 28, they have uh, come up with ideas and, and they have to agree on these policies and um, directions coming out of the European Union. So they have to decide, then uh, the, the, the different parties within the European Union have to vote them through. And the part, the whole 28, I believe, need to vote, have a, cons a consistent vote before they can be voted on, before they can be passed. I think everybody should vote. You can't complain about politicians if you don't choose who they are.